I'm the Managing Director of Google in the UK and Ireland, and my job is to help uh, consumers and businesses in the UK get the most out of the internet. Is that enough? <laughs> we can come back to that. Um, morning, everybody. Uh, Tim Brooks from The Guardian. Uh, I think we know uh, our business, as indeed you know Matt's. Um, I guess where we are at the moment, that the, the we're in a good place. I think digital um, digital advertising revenues are up over fifty percent in the first half of our financial year. Uh, we are one of the eighteen most linked to websites in, in the world. Uh, we're seeing growth in mobile uh, in triple digits at the moment in terms of audience. Uh, we have about two million visitors a day to our site. And we're logging about 10 comments a minute on the site. Um, so we're feeling quite content, not frog-like, uh, but quite content about where we are. What we're worrying about, and I hope we can talk about this morning, is we're thinking a lot about mobile. Uh, we're thinking a great deal about apps. And we're thinking a lot about platforms. Those are the things on our mind at the moment. Hi there, everybody. My name is Stephen Myron. Uh, I'm CEO of Global Radio. Uh, we own a number of radio stations, some of them Hopefully, you'll be familiar with brands like Capsule, Heart, Classic, LBC. Um, so, similar to Matt, I'm not uh, in the publishing space, I'm in the broadcasting space. Uh, unlike Tim, I won't give you a presentation on Global. Um, suffice to say that, uh, <laughs> suffice to say that uh, having worked 20 years also in the newspaper industry, I understand some of the issues that are going on there from the radio's perspective. Uh, fortunately, we aren't, we're not on a burning platform, we're actually uh, on a very stable, secure one. magazines all around hobbies and passions. Uh, these are um, uh, successful and profitable magazines uh, and have already have a global reach. Um, for us, the big challenge is now exploiting the new digital possibilities that are opening up. Uh, we already generate a lot of our ad revenue from digital markets, but the uh, interesting challenge now is to produce entirely new uh, editions for uh, iPad and other, other channels to new markets, and the XX presentation was entirely relevant and the, thing, the sort of things we talk about all the time. Well, actually, I wanted to ask you to kick off with that, your response. Uh, the most salient points for you, then, uh, regarding the XX presentation. Matt? Well, it was, it was about print, uh, mainly, so uh, a lot of point of view. I think, I mean, it's great to see uh, a very strong point of view uh, to a, a very strong point of view, I thought. Um, one thing I would dispute, though, I think, online, you can, um, you can do a lot uh, to understand how people are engaging with your content and improve what you're doing through the data that comes. So what I love about online is the art and science of trying to think about what, what will engage readers and then using the science of the data that comes through to improve the site. So um, I think I would differ with him there. The other thing I think uh, that's coming to online is obviously a, a, a more diverse range of screens. So the iPad, we'll talk about iPad maps, I'm sure, and mobile phones with apps, uh, and actually televisions with uh, that kind of content as well. So I think there's a lot more happening uh, digitally uh, to come. And also, uh, the other thing I'd say is um, HTML5, which is going to allow us to have much more engaging web pages. Uh, so I think, you know, if I were, yeah, so I'd, be, I'd be looking into HTML5 uh, big time, uh, because I think that is going to be a way in which we can make uh, content hugely more engaging uh, online. So I'd say there's a lot more data, there's a lot more flexibility, uh, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, to experiment. You're a very creative company, so perhaps more used to that, but picking up on that point about designers and perhaps being given their head a little bit more, you would agree with that, I presume? Um, I think give designers more space to experiment and give them data and hold them to that data. Um, 
I think one of the big opportunities is online is, is to kill the hippo. Uh, so uh, not to kill the newspaper industry, um, but to kill the hippo, which is the highest paid person's opinion. And get away from a point of view which is uh, asserted and then not argued against, uh, and have a point of view which is strong but then is uh, tempered with the data about what people actually do. And I think uh, the best online sites are, are doing that stuff all the time. We, we test uh, all the time our results pages. We tested 40 different shades of blue for our links to see which ones got people to the uh, site they're looking for quickest. And so any uh, pure online business does that all the time. And I think newspapers need to do that, or publishers need to do that a lot more. Tim. I think, I mean, I agreed with almost everything that Yacek said. Um, we won the world's best design newspaper in 08 and 09, so we're kind of on the same page, I think. Um, so where's the almost come in then? <laughs> uh, I, no, well, okay, almost everything, because I can't remember every word that he said. Um, I, think his, I think his points are extremely personal <coughs> for print people trying to, to make the transition, and there's no disguise that the transition is, is painful because you're asking people to unlearn habits and learn new habits, and that's always testing. Uh, I do think uh, it's a very, very interesting period we're going into now uh, around designing for tablets. Um, I listen to a lot of print designers, nothing wrong with the work in print, but they are talking about tablets as though it's a way of them porting their skills across to a new environment unblemished by change. And I think we're in uh, a stage uh, with tablets that radio was in when people used to wear evening dress to read the news on the radio. I don't think we've learned the language of tablet design yet. It'll be very interesting over the next two, three years to see how things move. Okay, Stephen? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would absolutely concur. I, I think the, um, I think they are too formulaic. I actually think it's probably a stage before that, actually. I, I, I question whether it's not about designers, it's about developers. Uh, I think you look at the sort of you know, the infrastructures that, that many businesses inherited in the digital space, content management systems, very poor, you know, uh, and, and I think there's, there's some legacy issues that, that come from that. So I actually think, you know, my challenge would be, I don't necessarily subscribe, it's all, develop, uh, all designers. I think some of the big issues that some of the newspapers have has been on the development platforms that they're, they're based on. Um, it, it chimed completely with, completely with the discussions we have across uh, the publishing groups in the future. Um, what we've been trying to do is stand back and say that we are in a business which produces content and has a whole of, a lot of skill sets around visual presentation, around packaging. And can you remix those and start to really produce engaging, compelling packages for the new uh, distribution channels? And that's what we're trying to do. And I think that was exactly um, one of the, the key messages. So, um, and, and you do see designers and, and writers rising to that challenge to realise they have to they have to present the information in a different way for a digital environment. The iPad is um, a, a breakthrough. It is, I, I agree, it's, it is black tie still and reading the news because it's the it's the first the first step in clearly what is going to be a very fast growing channel to to to, to markets. But um, there are going to be 15 million Apple iPads out there this year, which is a lot of Christmas presents. Uh, particularly in the US for grandmothers and grandfathers. So these are growing markets, first of all. Secondly, the other big thing about the iPad from where we're sitting is we are seeing a change in the commercial model because what we're seeing is that people are prepared to pay. And that is a big step forward. Uh, pay for content or pay for content, not just for the for machine, for, for the Apple. Christmas presents, yeah. No, to pay, they are prepared to pay the charges, cover, cover prices for single issues and subscriptions. Would you all agree with that? Um, uh, the iTunes payment platform uh, is incredibly powerful and uh, you're seeing you know, publishers taking advantage of that. I think uh, the same kind of payment platforms on mobile phones will be a big enabler of um, subscription-based content and micro-payments. And uh, one of the issues with mobile phones is that aside from the Apple platform, there isn't a common payment uh, standard available. I think uh, every consumer wants that and every business wants that, but the structure of the industry is kind of acting a little bit against that. But I think that pressures. Uh, payment on TV, uh, you know, we're, we're now used to paying on TV, at least 10 million Sky house, households are, uh, and so we've got three screens there where you can uh, start to see payment models coming in. may not be tomorrow, may not be next year, but I think over time we'll see uh, the advent of a, a, a much broader range of ways for consumers to pay for services. I think um, 
couple of observations about Kevin Turner on the tablet. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, iTunes platform is a platform that people are used to paying through uh, and are comfortable paying through. Uh, that's why we sell our iPhone app rather than give it away for free. That's one reason why, why we do so. Uh, I, I'm very wary at the moment of extrapolating from what we've seen in, in, in the very few months that the iPad has been around. Uh, there's only about 300,000 in the UK. Uh, they all belong to people who think nothing of spending £400 on a piece of kit. Uh, and therefore, I'm not sure that their early behaviour is extrapolatable, uh, and I'm not sure that I would read too much into what we're seeing at, at, at the moment. Um, I think the, the other trend that's observable right now uh, is that you're getting these emergent aggregator plays where people are saying actually it's a real hassle buying lots of different things uh, through iTunes or through, or through wherever. Apple have said that they uh, are looking at a an aggregated platform for news type content. Uh, there's Ongo, which has just got funding, a California startup funding from the Washington Post and the New York Times. We're looking to aggregate um, and provide a subscription product with a lot of print product inputs. I think we'll see a lot of this over, over the next few months for the reason Matt gives, which is that uh, buying stuff through these devices at the moment is a pretty chaotic market.